it's in the case of a large tentorial arteriovenous fistula treated with endovascular embolization through a transarterial and transvenous approach. The patient is an 80-year-old female with a five-year history of right pulsatile tinnitus, vertigo, and decreased hearing on the right side. Her examination was normal and non-focal, except for moderate decrease in hearing on the right side. She did not have any significant past medical history. CT was normal. A uh, MRI demonstrated a possible vascular lesion on the right free edge of the tentorium. There is a draining vein uh, with some compression of the brain stem. The patient uh, went on the, a diagnostic angiography, revealing a large tentorial AV fistula. This angiogram demonstrates the complexity of the fistula and multiple feeders coming from occipital, middle meningeal artery. Uh, in this lateral view, you can observe better the multiple branches. Again, the occipital artery and multiple branches of the middle cell artery and a very large tortuous draining vein into the vein of Rosenthal. So first, we try a uh, transarterial approach. The procedure was performed under conscious sedation through a uh, right femoral artery approach. A large guide catheter is in the external carotid artery. An intermediate catheter was navigated into the maxillary artery. And the microwire microcatheter, as you can observe, are navigated into the branches of the middle cell artery. Here you can observe the intermediate catheter advance for more support. The middle meningeal artery is always the safest and the easiest route to approach this tentorial or any dural AV fistula. The microcatheter is navigating through the middle meningeal artery to the proximity of the fistula. And we start embolizing slowly this large uh, tentorial fistula. Here the onyx is going first into the branches of the occipital artery. Once some of those branches are embolized, the, the onyx keeps on going into the actual fistulous connection and into the venous pouch. More onyx is injected to really uh, fill in the venous pouch and the abnormal connection. On a uh, AP view, you can observe how uh, the cast of onyx into the fistula is being filled and some other uh, dura branches. We perform another angiogram through the intermediate catheter and observe that the fistula is still present and there is a abnormally enlarged and tortuous vein coming from the proximal segment of the middle meningeal artery. Multiple attempts to try the microwire into that branch, uh, but we couldn't. So ultimately we stopped there and we decide to go through a transvenous approach. A Neuromax guide catheter is advanced into the internal jugular vein. You can observe here the two catheters, one in the arterial side and one in the venous side. Uh, we further advance the Neuromax into the uh, uh, sigmoid sinus and on the roadmap we advance the glide wire and the intermediate catheter for more support. Here we are uh, advancing the uh, large guide catheter for more uh, support to the intermediate catheter. Uh, the intermediate catheter has uh, again the, the glide wire and eventually we're able to pass the intermediate catheter uh, at the origin of the straight sinus. Uh, we then rotate the view. You will see how uh, the fluoroscopy is rotated in a certain way that now we are able to open the angle from the straight sinus into the deep venous structures, in this case, the vein of Rosenthal. Once we uh, open the angle for better visualization, we perform another arterial angiogram uh, to delineate the venous structures. Uh, you observe how nicely now we, we observe the takeoff of uh, other multiple veins that we need to go through in order to get um, the uh, foot of the vein that comes off the, uh, the remaining nidus so of the fistula. Here we're navigating with a microwire, a 0014 microwire, followed by a 0017 inch microcatheter. We, 
we continue advancing the microcatheter over the microwire carefully through these delicate veins and this uh, trick here is that we will need to get into the very proximal junction of the fistula and the vein and based on this venogram it looks like we have obtained access exactly where we need it to be. We then remove the microwire and purge the microcatheter with DMSO followed by Onyx. In this case we're using Onyx 18 again and slowly filling the fistula. We are allowing some uh, reflux into the microcatheter uh, to also obtain some uh, occlusion of, of the vein. Another angiogram is still demonstrating that there is still fistula. We in inject uh, a little bit more onyx and complete the obliteration. Once we have sufficient uh, venous reflux, we then slowly pull the microcatheter. As you can observe, you will see the onyx cast slightly moving at the, uh, simultaneously as we pull the microcatheter. Uh, the microcatheter may take some time to release from the onyx cast. In this case, it came out nicely. Another in internal coronary angi angiography demonstrates complete obliteration of the fistula. As you can observe here, there is very slow flow into that abnormally enlarged vein that eventually it will thrombose. The patient did very well and was discharged 24 hours after the procedure. A two-month MRI demonstrated no evidence of recurrence of residual arteriovenous fistula. The patient remains asymptomatic. Thank you.